Hi everybody, Neurogal here. Welcome to my channel. I'm a neurologist. Today, I'm going to do a famous Neurogal shroom review. I'm gonna talk about cordyceps mushroom. Cordyceps is purported to have a variety of therapeutic benefits. It is most popular for its reported ability to increase energy, stamina, and enhance exercise endurance. It's purported to enhance sexual function and libido. Its nickname is the Himalayan Viagra. And it's also thought to protect against asthma, depression, hold anti-diabetic properties, protect the kidneys, and enhance the immune system. Some athletes like Joe Rogan swear by it and use it prior to strength training. In fact, it's one of the active ingredients in many popular exercise enhancing supplements like Onnit's Shroom Tech. It is considered an adaptogen, a term initially created in Russia used to describe herbal supplements that increase a person's resistance to environmental stressors. Adaptogens are also supposed to build up mental and physical vitality. Is there any evidence to support the claims about cordyceps adaptogenic benefits? By the way, I provide an unbiased evaluation of the scientific evidence on a supplement. There are plenty of videos out there trying to sell you different supplements. I am not one of them. Cordyceps is a fungus that grows on the heads of caterpillars. Creepy, no? Talk about zombie apocalypse. This makes it a parasitic fungus, not actually a mushroom. Its name, cordyceps, comes from the Latin words club and head, cause it looks like a club growing out of the head of a caterpillar. Still can't get over that image. It grows in high altitudes and is endemic to the Himalayan mountains. It's used for a variety of medicinal purposes in Chinese and Tibetan medicine. Its properties were discovered when Himalayan herders observed that the goats and sheep that consumed cordyceps while grazing in the forest became very strong and resilient. These herders noticed these effects and began to give it regularly to their livestock to increase milk production and to improve the reproductive capacity and vitality of their cattle. Then, the herders themselves started consuming it because, hey, why not? And they became convinced of its medicinal benefits in enhancing strength, endurance, and sexual potency and desire. Is there any data in humans to support the claims that cordyceps has all of these adaptogenic benefits? Let's look at athletic performance first. Animal studies show promising results. Cordyceps has been found to improve physical endurance in mice in a dose-dependent manner. Cordyceps is thought to improve physical endurance by increasing cardiac muscle function, inhibiting the contraction of the trachea, which is the major breathing airway, and relaxes vascular smooth muscle. It also is thought to improve physical endurance by increasing lactic acid clearance. When someone uses a lot of muscle, like working out muscles, produce a lot of lactic acid, which in turn can make someone very, very sore and it can be very difficult to move when you have a lot of lactic acid buildup. So cordyceps is thought to increase the clearance of lactic acid from your body. What about human studies? A study performed in 2010 found that administration of cordyceps to participants aged 50 to 75 modestly improved exercise performance. So that's good news. Another randomized clinical study performed in 2014 found that the administration of cordyceps plus rhodiola, which is another adaptogen, in high altitude runners improved exercise endurance compared to placebo. However, another two studies that gave cordyceps to bicyclists found no change in exercise endurance after five weeks of cordyceps administration compared to placebo. The treatment group numbers were low, the first study had a total number of 22 participants and the second study had a total of eight participants. The low power could have contributed to the negative results. Just to give you an idea of comparison, randomized clinical trials in pharmaceutical drugs contain thousands of people. The more participants in a study, the higher the power. So the greater the chance that you'll identify a true result. I think that more studies should be done and hopefully some clinical trials with a lot of participants can be performed to truly identify whether cordyceps can improve uh, physical endurance and vitality. Let's move on to the second topic. Is there any evidence to support that cordyceps can act as a libido booster or enhance sexual performance? 
Like I talked about earlier, traditional Eastern healers have used cordyceps as a libido booster and tout its sexual performance enhancement qualities, hence its nickname, the Himalayan Viagra. There are some animal studies that support this statement. Cordyceps has been found to increase testosterone in production in mice in multiple studies. I was not able to find much human data within this realm. I found two references to two Chinese studies, but I couldn't actually find or access the studies myself to thoroughly investigate them. Um, the first study found that when a specific strain of cordyceps called cordyceps sinensis was given to 22 men for eight weeks, it resulted in a 33% increase in sperm count, a 27% decrease in sperm malformations, and a 79% increase in sperm survival rate. Another study reported that cordyceps administration improved libido and sexual desire in females by 86%. Again, I couldn't access these studies despite looking everywhere to find them. So I can't tell whether these studies were randomized or whether they were measured against a placebo group. The fact that I couldn't find the details on these studies makes me very skeptical of them. Therefore, my consensus is that there is no clear evidence to support that cordyceps can enhance sexual function or vitality in humans. What about the other reported benefits of cordyceps? Is there any human data to support that cordyceps can improve kidney function. There are a few clinical studies that show that cordyceps can protect kidney function in people with lupus nephritis. Lupus is a very severe autoimmune disease in which the immune system attacks multiple organs in the, in the body, uh, including the kidney. Uh, cordyceps has also been found to be protective in people who have had kidney transplants, although the details of that are unclear. Can cordyceps improve symptoms in people with asthma. There are human clinical studies and these are mixed. There was one study that was performed in China that found that cordyceps could decrease inflammatory markers in people with asthma. There was another study, this, this was a double-blinded placebo-controlled study of 85 children that found no significant improvement in asthma symptoms compared to placebo. Overall, there are human studies that show promising results. Uh, of, of cordyceps with regard to its adaptogenic benefits. Of course, there are other studies that refute that, so more studies need to be done in humans to really come to any conclusions. What about the safety of cordyceps? Cordyceps can be harmful in certain situations. Cordyceps has been shown to increase the proliferation of certain blood cell types, so it may worsen certain blood cell cancers. Cordyceps also has anti-diabetic properties, so in a person who is taking anti-diabetic medication, it can lower your blood sugar to dangerous levels. Cordyceps also has blood thinning properties, so people who are on blood thinners already could have an increased risk of bleeding if they take cordyceps. There have been a couple of case reports identifying lead poisoning in people who are taking cordyceps for herbal treatment. However, my suspicion is that this may have been caused by the source of where the cordyceps was made. Many supplements that are created in China of poisonous metals such as lead because Chinese soils are largely affected by pollution and therefore herbal supplements that are grown in China have been found to have higher levels of toxic agents like lead, which is why I wouldn't encourage anyone to buy supplements made in China. That's a wrap folks. Hope this video was informative. Please be sure to hit that like button and leave comments about your experience with cordyceps or other adaptogens, please make sure to subscribe and visit my website, neurogal.com, for more informative videos and content about the brain. We'll catch you next time.